playing in Maui. Um, it's beautiful. I got to play on New Year's Eve and um, they offered me if I wanted the seven to nine slot or the four to six slot. And I'm like, oh, give me the four to six slot yeah. so I can watch the ocean. I'm sitting there on the beach playing as the sunset comes in, <sighs> sitting there doing whatever I want to do. I can play whatever I want, drinking fresh pod juice and uh, fresh pineapple juice and just hanging out. And uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's really fun out there. It's a, it's a great place to play. So how long have you been going to uh, Hawaii then? Um, I go out there um, every year for a few months at a time and I've uh, been doing that for a few years now um, I've been, we got more and more friends my wife and I um, we have friends out there that we can stay with and meet up with and uh, play poker with and all kinds of different things play music with as well so uh, so it's great to have a little bit of a community out there uh, yeah. on the island yeah so you just go back out and you book your places and sit on the beach and play while people eat oh Is yeah that, yeah oh. yeah absolutely so yeah I go snorkel in the morning time uh, hang out on the beach Go play a gig for two hours, then I can leave and do whatever I want in the evening. Play another gig, go hang out at a friend's house, do whatever whatever I want to do. It's a nice nice island lifestyle. Nice island. Are you going to retire there, or do you like living yeah. in Santa Rosa too? Well, as I was just telling um, um, him out there, yes, yes, all out there. Um, it's it's I, there's a lot of great things about Sonoma County, but it's so cold for me. Um, so Sonoma, so was, yeah, yeah, very very for me it's very cold. So out in Hawaii when we were there, I think it, it got windy and rainy, and I think it dropped to like 72 degrees, and that's about as cold as I like. It. <laughs> yeah. If it gets any colder than that, I, I, then I'm not super happy. So I so I love being out there as much as possible, uh, just doing anything out there. The Warm, food is so good. Nice. Warm, nice, all the, and I like to cook as well, and uh, so much fresh fish, so much fresh fruit, fresh vegetables, and uh, it's, it's fantastic. I love it. Oh my gosh. All right, so you studied at the Ali Akbar College of Music, and you studied yeah. Hindustani slide guitar. Yes, yeah, so um, rather than this regular conventional guitar here with all these frets, um, I have another guitar that you play on your lap. Right, like, like a steel? That. Yeah, yeah, like a steel guitar, okay. exactly similar to that. And uh, I, at, their, at that class, most people are playing sitars or sarod. The, the big, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, big old things like that. So I was the only one who was playing that slide guitar in there, trying to emulate those sounds. And, uh -huh. and the slide is nice because it doesn't have any frets or keys. You can really kind of hit any part of the right. note that you want. Right. So you can really, very suitable for uh, Indian classical music. Does and, that uh, also help you play this in any, you know? Uh, well, yeah, it's definitely a huge influence for sure. Um, I don't play too much Hindustani classical music on this uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. on this instrument. I do more kind of funk, jazz, blues. But it definitely, um, it's once you start studying music like that, it's really hard for it not to influence all of your life. Right. So, right. Uh, so it's definitely in there a lot and uh, occasionally I'll play some meditations or something like that on this type of oh, instrument as well nice. so, so, so nice, yeah. interesting okay so I see this thing called NAM N-A-M-M -M. Mm -hmm. and so you are a pr now what I understand NAM is is it, it's like a, uh, you bring music people together and guitars together and it's a big a promotional event to sell and yeah yeah well basically it's a trade show a um, trade show but it's okay. a really really fun trade show okay. and, and it's the largest <laughs> music trade show in the world oh so all um, right. and it's also what's interesting is it's not open to the public at all so there's only three types of people that can go there either people who make gear like this is made by LHT guitars so LHT guitars will be there made Dunlop strings Dunlop strings will be there having a little booth EMG pickups will have a little booth there as well. So either you have to make gear or you have to buy gear, like you have to be loud and clear music okay. who wants to go buy gear and see what the latest stuff is and right. put all your orders in for a hundred of this, hundred of that. Or um, the other kind of person is the demonstrating person who demos and sees what the gear sounds like. So that's what I do, is I'll go out there and I'll show off what the amp sounds like and go play for a half hour here and there and then go uh, get a chance to listen to all the amazing players out there. I mean. Oh. There's no limit to who you see. Uh, we, last, a couple of years ago, we saw Stevie Wonder out there just walking through the crowd. Uh, Steve Vai, Gloria Gaynor. Oh, whoa, um, whoa, uh, yeah. So many, I mean, anybody you want. I mean, it's, it's a lot of uh, a lot of amazing players out there, so it's a nice chance to... So me is just a normal person. I could just walk in and start, no. No, you need a big, you need a badge and security and all this stuff. Although they do concerts, though, um, in the evening time. The show goes till about 6 o'clock okay. usually every day. And then after that... It's right at the Anaheim Convention Center, and Anaheim has the Marriott and the Hilton on each side of it, um, the convention center does. So 
you can go to either lobby and there's concerts till midnight to 1 a.m. Uh, and those are open to the public. So you can see all kinds of amazing people. I saw Johnny Lang before, Trombone Shorty, um, Sheila E. Oh, a lot wow. of, and everything's free. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, if so you welcome. can get in. Right. <laughs> My neighbor's here. Hey, Pam. Jim is here. Aaron's there. Oh, we so, so Linda we're Linda Vaughn is here. Linda. Hi, Hi everybody. Silver Shells Bling Party with Nate Lopez <laughs> is our gift. Guest. Is, gift. He has a gift. You are a gift. It. Yeah. He has a gift. <laughs> so, yeah, so I saw that. I saw that Nam, and I was thinking, geez, I wonder, you know. I mean, you, oh, it's, so it's you, super fun. you demonstrate now. I saw where there you have a guitar with no holes, no hole in oh, the like middle. Oh, like no hole in Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's so. My acoustic guitars don't typically have holes. They're usually made by Emerald guitars. Okay. Um, and it does have a hole. It's just over here, off to the side. And if you look at EmeraldGuitars.com, you'll see you'll see what we're talking about. Or NateLopez.com. There's pictures of that as Nate well. NateLopez.com. Yeah, yeah, take a look at that as well. Um, so rather than a hole um, in the middle of right, the wood, right. it's the hole over here. So that does a couple things. One thing is it's nice is that you can hear it better. It's not pro projecting the sound outwards. Okay. It's projecting it up towards the player. Okay. And also it allows that flat top to resonate better because it doesn't have a big hole in it. So oh, it yeah, lets yeah, up. Yeah. So it so ends up okay. sounding a lot better and um, and works a lot better. Then but I, yeah, you're right. You see most guitars have the hole right in the middle. Right, but, uh, right, but not right. All of them. But then I yeah I saw on yours you were doing uh, this uh, the, the, what what was it it was called something but anyway yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I've got uh, a variety of different guitars, but all the guitars that I play, whether they're acoustic, electric, whether they're headless, like this one is here, or have a headstock, uh, they're all this eight-string hybrid guitar type of thing with the half bass, half guitar. And that's what I like to play. So, did you invent this? No, I can't take credit for inventing this. Um, I have saw some other people, I think you could say Charlie Hunter invented it, and I got to see him play a few times, um, and I was a bass player at the time. And uh, I really enjoy the, the groove and, and the capability to control the type of music. You know, the bass player decides if the song is a country song, if it's a polka song, if it's a funk song. That's all decide, decide from the bass. Like, you could have a, a thing going like... And that bass gives it kind of that happy thumb, or you can change it up. To, to make the song feel how you yeah. want with the bass and I and once I started playing guitar strings I didn't want to give up that control of the feel of the song so so I so I do these eight string hybrid guitars uh, either playing solo or uh, sometimes I'll play with a drummer uh -huh. and that's oh, yeah, kind yeah. of a full band because you don't, two of us. can't be tapping on your doing the drum on your well, you could. You you could. Play, play, and there, there are a tap. lot of amazing players. Uh, you go to the NAMM show and you'll definitely see a lot of amazing players who use every aspect of the guitar, tapping here and there. Uh, Adrian Ballou is one yeah. of them. He's a fantastic uh, okay. uh, player and uh, who just really gets so much out of that. And I don't do too much of that. I really just try and focus on, on, on here. But you can get a lot of rhythm on here. You know, there's... have a little bit of, I do a little bit of progressive stuff, but not too much. Yeah, yeah. You can always do as much as you want. There's definitely a lot of people who do a lot more than I do, but I just want anything, just want to play enough that uh, gets that groove uh, across to the audience. It is a groove. You gotta uh, have a groove it, in anything yeah, you do. Yeah, you gotta have your hook. That is awesome. So, is it hard, like, well, I guess it's like playing the piano. You play the melody, and then the you know, the chord, or... Yeah, yeah, very you're, similar. But you're doing it with the same hand, so you're playing... Yeah, yeah. So that's that is a little bit more challenging. The piano is nice because you have that left hand that can right. do the bass, and then the right hand can do chords right. and, and that type of thing. So you have the hand independence. Um, in the on the guitar, it's different because I really only have four fingers right. that I can do here <laughs> yeah. with this. I'm using the thumb to hold, hold in the right. back right there. So I've got these four fingers that a piano player has ten, and then like you said, it's all kind of coming out the same thing. So a lot of times I'll do the uh, bass line with my thumb for the most part. I'll let some other fingers You're get in there right. sometimes, but the bass line with the thumb. Fingers will do the chords and the melody on there like that. And, um, 
It's a lot of fun to do. I mean, any instrument, um, whether it's a saxophone or violin or drums or whatever, we all practice by ourselves. And, and that can be yeah. fun or it can be not as much fun. Um, so this, being able to accompany myself, it makes practice a lot more fun. Oh, I bet. So, I, well, yeah, and then learning. You're, you're just learning. No, oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, always. Oh, yes, learning. absolutely. Always learning and uh, trying to steal from other musicians. And, so, <laughs> incorporate it. Yeah, I can't. That's what I do with dancing. I, I see somebody make a move. I'm like, ooh, I like that. Oh, yeah, what they say, I think good artists borrow and great artists steal. That's right. So I'll, I'll take what I can get. That's right. I watch my girlfriends like, mm, I like mm. And that's one of the great things about having a platform like you guys have here is I can play and I can kind of do my thing as I've come to develop it. Someone can see this and learn from that and yeah. then they can take it to a whole nother level that I didn't even imagine and then I can steal off them. So they can steal from me and then I can steal right back from them and it's this beautiful growing uh, growing thing for the whole world. So, yeah, well we'd like it. someone to, you know, to see this and hear it and go, wow! That's really awesome. I want to do that or try that or I, yeah. I, you know, if you're interested in the, the, the guitar, you know, you can message us and we can talk about the guitar or something, but it's, uh, it, so it's the eight string hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. Yes. It's yeah. Little, it's sure. really, I think really we should awesome. hear a whole song. You want to hear? You want to hear a song? Well, yeah. Now, do you write your own music? Now, you said you have original music. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, I enjoy. One of the great things about playing music is that you can choose to uh, have a song. Like I play songs. Uh, you know, I'll play a blues song in a country style. I'll play a pop song in a blues style, and you have that control as an artist to do what with it what you feel. Right. So I really enjoy arranging songs uh, for this instrument for solo instrumental stuff. Okay. But I do, but I do write a fair amount of music as well. I probably do more arrangements um, than I do original music, but I do write a lot of original music as well, and it's fun, a uh, good way to express yourself. I think we all have to create somehow. So right, right. Everybody has something creative inside. Absolutely. And we like meeting our artist friends. We have painter friends. And, oh, that's great! You know, musician friends and I love the visual arts. I can't, I can't do any of it. The, the visual arts stuff is fantastic. I can't draw or anything like that. And so I have, I have such admiration for all of that kind of stuff. So I, I, I do can my thing. Glue things. That's you know, I can glue <laughs> things on other things. <laughs> that's fantastic. Nate, Nate, we have duct tape. Oh, see, that's duct tape I can do. I'm not even allowed to touch glue in the house because I think one time, last time I used super glue, my wife found super glue drops on the hardwood floors and I taped some of my favorite, I glued some of my favorite clothes together. So I'm not even allowed to use glue. So I have a, a lot of respect for y'all. If you can glue things successfully and it's not a mess, then that's, that's fantastic because yeah. I, I can't do we, that. We have a question for Nate. Okay. Nate, did you bring the guitar? With your doggy's ashes, ah, uh, yeah. Let's see. So th I have a couple different guitars. This is the travel version of that guitar that you're talking about, Laura. Yeah. So um, so yeah, this is as you can see, travel guitar. It's kind of straight. It doesn't have a body to it at all. But I do have a signature guitar from LHT Guitars, um, and I didn't bring that with me today. Uh, and yeah, what my my dog Teddy uh, passed away when I was uh, a few months before that guitar was being made. And I talked to the luthier about it, and uh, I really wanted to incorporate my dog in my guitar somehow and kind of just have him always with me. Right. So um, in the finish of the guitar, not this one, but the, the other version, um, I put my dog's ashes in there. It's kind of like a dark burst. Oh, so he's, he's, nice. he's always there with me. So, But I brought this one with me today because this is the one I'm playing down in L.A. What kind of a sweet dog was it? Uh, he was a little Pomeranian. Aww. So yeah, we had him for about 10 years, and we loved him so much. Uh, but a Pomeranian, there's not a lot of ashes. So, uh, no. so yeah, it's very, very, they're, very they're small like, amount. Can, yeah, even when you get them wet, they're like... <laughs> right, oh, yeah. Just, here's, just my, little here's my dog. And right. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Put little legs on it. So, uh, so yeah, the, the luthier at LHT Guitars was really great. He was able to really do a lot with uh, with very little material, and uh, and I was real happy with it. So you can put in for a, to have something, uh, I guess, custom made? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're in an incredible area here in Northern California yeah. with so many fantastic luthiers. We've got Tom Rebecca, we've got Megan Wells, uh, and Tyler Wells doing this LHT guitars, and and so many more uh, Alembic guitars and basses around here. So, yeah, a lot of the um, luthiers you can have them make you whatever you want, even if it's something weird like a half guitar, half bass combination. They're like, oh, I don't, I've never made one of those, but these luthiers around here are uh, fantastic, and they can they can kind of do whatever you want. So. Do you pick out the wood? How do you yeah. choose the wood? Okay. Oh, uh, that's a really good question. Um, actually, so 
Wood has different characteristics. In addition right. to looking however you want it to look, this is a beautiful wood. It is um, a beautiful piece. This yeah, is I'm a myrtle wood, wow. actually. Um, so um, Jack Cassidy, the famous bass player, uh, I think of Jesper Jefferson Starship, he, when his wife passed away, he cut down their myrtle wood tree in the front yard of their house and had a bass made out of it. Um, wow. So when my instrument uh, came about, they had some wood from that same tree left over. So that's the wood right here, this darker wood, is oh, that wow. same myrtle okay. wood right there. Right. So, um, so how you pick the wood, in addition to the aesthetic um, of the wood, you, um, let's see, where's that, there we go. <laughs> in yeah. addition yeah, to, yeah, the, yeah. to the aesthetic of the wood, uh, it, each wood sounds different, is gonna give your guitar a different tone right. to it. Okay. So um, when I was first getting a custom guitar, I went to LMI um, and went checked the different boards, and what you do is you'll knock on the board and if it's a dry sound, you're gonna have a dry sounding guitar. If it's a rounded, woody sound, right. that's that's kind of the sound that's gonna happen. So when I when I went originally, I thought I wanted this um, instrument made out of a wenge, this really dense, dark, beautiful, grainy wood. Okay. But I knocked on it, and I was like, ah, oh, it was not it was not the sound for me. It was not what I not had. Not an my acoustic, mind, so. not a. It's pretty, but it didn't just connect. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you have your own different style, and you have an idea of what the instrument's gonna bring out with that. And uh, some some woods. Can make a uh, make all the notes really be very distinct and separate and clear, and some are a little warmer sounding and kind of run all the notes okay, together. Okay. So it really matters what type of wood. So um, so I kind of give them my basic aesthetic, and then I trust the luthier, I trust the guitar maker to uh, to pick out the right kind of thing. Say, oh hey, I want this characteristic. I want to sound like this guy, and uh, and then they'll they'll do it for you. They know the most about wood. The luthiers are fantastic. Well, that's so, and it looks like there's a lot of frets. Yeah, you know, I don't even know. Usual? I don't even know how many um, I have because I don't quite get all the way up there. People ask me. Most guitars have about 19, 22, or 24 frets on them. I think I have 22. Okay. I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I do have 22, but that's all I need. I really don't get up there too high and, and whale or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I don't whale. do too much of that. It's nice to have some notes up there <laughs> if you want. But, the dogs help. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. But some instruments go keep on going all the way to 36 frets or something like that if you want some of those really, really high, high notes, but I don't, I don't need them. I like, I like the mid middle notes right in here. Oh, I had to ask about the, yeah, about the guitar. No, I no. did. I asked my questions and being an interview. I'm just asserting my desires. No, I, I love it. Yeah, sure. I'll play a song then real quick. Uh, let's see what we got here. How about, um, so I wrote this song when I was out in Hawaii. Um, not this last time, but the time before that I went. And uh, I got a chance to um, go on a snorkel trip and see some spinner dolphins run around, going around playful and surfing the waves and doing and some spinning. Spin. Yeah, oh they, my they, gosh. that's why. They, yeah, it's really, really amazing um, to see these playful animals and to see so many animals out there. And I love animals. I love the dog out there. So so adorable. And I love yeah. my dog and all that kind of stuff. So um, so this song I wrote here uh, is called Dolphins. So I'll play this for you. Here. Okay, we're ready. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
near the base and yeah I try and, and then, uh, get some different things happening in there as much as possible yeah, so that's a gorgeous song oh thanks thanks yeah. yes it's always interesting when songwriting you never know exactly when it's done and how much more do you want to add and because you know I think inspiration comes to you in little bits and maybe you'll have just an idea for one little riff one little lick but it's not a whole song, but maybe it is enough for a whole song. And right. How many things you got to add, and when is it done? It's, I guess I guess that's true with any kind of art. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, even, you know, I put out my jewelry, and it's like, is this enough? Do I need more? Is it too much? And, right, yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's uh, Editing is a, is a big part of creating. It's, uh, it's definitely, definitely, I think, at least 50%. So. Do you ever wake up in the middle of the night and go, oh, I have an idea for a song? Uh... No, not too much. I wish. I wish. Um, a lot of times, uh, you know, this this is like I said. This inspiration just came from um, from grooving along and uh, and just being out on the beach and just trying to capture that kind of that feel of the waves. Yeah. But a lot of times, um, I'll hear a song on the radio. Um, like uh, I was listening to uh, some Whitney Houston the other day on the way to a gig. A lot of times, I'll drive oh, uh -huh. an hour each way to a gig and, yeah. and listen to some stuff and. Uh, and I'll listen to the song and I'm like, oh, this is cool. And this, this groove, this gives me an idea. What if we did this groove, but if we did it with a whole different melody and a whole different thing. And so, uh, so I get inspired a lot from driving around the car and uh, getting to listen to it all kinds all of right. great Right. That is awesome. Awesome. So you also, let me see what else I have in my notes here. I have, you were voted best jazz musician or group of the North Bay in 2019 by North Bay Bohemian. Yeah, that was a huge honor. I was really thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really nice. And there's a lot of great uh, jazz players out here for sure. Um, so, so that was really nice uh, honor for sure. And it's, uh, you know, what I do is is definitely I, I consider it jazz, but I don't necessarily tell people, oh, hey, I'm a jazz guitarist or this and that, because you come different things come to mind. Right, right, right. I hear a jazz guitarist, and it's like, oh, I have to okay, interject. okay. I have to interject. I get buzzing on my output, Nate, okay. with, oh. the, with the instrument. Okay, you hear so it right now. So we're, we're not going to be able to play another song. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry just saying that, that it's uh, distorted. Just you like that? Any, I'm sorry, I don't hear any. Yeah, okay. I get a distortion on the output. Because she has the headphones. Oh, because it's too loud? Uh, it could be. I can turn it down if you want. Oh, I can Maybe. see it. I can see it right here clipping. Oh, yeah, right I there. I can see that clipping. So you can still maybe that's a little better. That's much better. Yeah, yeah, that's easy to easy to fix. A okay, now you got to play it all over again, though. Sure, yeah, you can do whatever you want, whatever you want. Uh, yeah. So, and then you were best acoustic musician in 2017, also. Yeah, which is uh, interesting because um, I actually have an acoustic uh, solo eight-string album, but that only came out um, recently. So uh, it's interesting. I really don't do a lot of acoustic gigs. I probably do most things on electric. So that was a surprise to do the uh, to get the acoustic award. That was fantastic. I was. Uh, it's nice to be recognized. Oh great. yeah, and the contemporary finger style competition. <laughs> right now. Finger style. Mm -hmm. say, you know, you can tip toes and you have fingertips, but you can't finger toes. That's true. That's that's the top one. Well, some people yeah. can. Anything's possible. Look up on YouTube. And yeah, be, <laughs> I'm gonna play. Anything it. is possible for sure. Yeah, yeah. Finger style where you're using instead of using a pick like most right, people right. do, um, kind of going back and forth real fast. Right. I, I don't use a pick at all. I just use my hands and. And that's and then you got. So you got the finger style because of the eight string that you play? Actually, um, they wouldn't let me play an eight string in the competition. Um, I had to play a six string, so that was a little unusual for me. Um, so everybody's, but it's nice to have everyone on the even playing field yeah, and playing the same yeah, thing. Yeah. So I had to do the six string. So it's really more just the style of how I'm doing things, where I'll be holding down the bass line here with my thumb. Right, right. And then uh, maybe accenting it with some chords. And then adding some melody on it. Oh my gosh. So you get it's 
very hard to do all those different parts if you're using a pick. I mean, you can use right. a pick for there and then kind of grab the other strings. That's definitely possible. But I like to have the ability to kind of do what I'm doing with my fingers. Yeah, there, I thought so. a pick was more strumming or picking, sure. you know, exactly what it says pick. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's typically what you'll see is the, the re lead uh, riff guys kind of doing all that kind of stuff. Or like you said, the regular strumming. But I'll do that with just the thumb instead. And, uh, I think you can do pretty well with that. So how are the calluses on your fingers? Oh, you know, that's, uh, people talk a lot about that, as you can, this is my main callusing hand, and, you know, not too bad. They're actually yeah. really thick, but they're pretty soft. Yeah? But they are pretty thick, so, uh, so I can, yeah, you can take a needle on there, and it's, you well, won't, you won't even feel it. What was that? But okay. not hard, I, I take a lot of baths. There was so. that. <laughs> so keep them nice and soft. Thank goodness. Thank God, God. This yeah. This is a small room. You gotta, do, yeah, so you gotta take care of yourself. Uh... You know when they say, I played my guitar until my fingers bled? Oh, yeah. Did your fingers bleed when, have they ever bled? When you yeah, bled? yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, you get there uh, doing some gigs that you haven't done in a while. Um, especially, I play upright bass a little bit, and oh, that's that's okay. very taxing where you're okay. plugging that and plugging along. Yeah, I've gotten, you know, you got the different stages. You start to get the blister, and then the blister gets huge, and then the blister pops, and all this kind of stuff. So while you're playing the three-hour, four-hour gig. So it can get pretty intense Ow, for sure, yeah. but uh, but that hasn't happened for quite some time. Uh, pretty much now, all my injuries are through clumsiness. So <laughs> I don't yeah. have to deal with that so much. But yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's it, it's not too hard. I mean, when you're first playing the guitar, pressing down on the strings can be a little bit painful. On that, on your fingers. Yeah, just on the yeah. fingertips a little bit, just to do that kind of thing. But but you get over that within a couple of weeks if you want to stick with it. If you do it every day, then it's not too bad, and I don't even think about it. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. You yeah, know, for sure. Figure, so, ooh, ow. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I think that's. Mm -hmm. They actually make little like a uh, rubber fingertip things for beginner players to play if you want to do something like that. Or some people put crazy glue on their fingertips to get it kind of a faux callus on there. Crazy. So. Oh well, well, you yeah, know, you're not allowed to do that, right? No, I no, no. I'm, I'm not, <laughs> not allowed. I glue my fingers together and then nobody wants that. That's no fun. So, does your wife travel with you? Um, yeah, yeah, she was just came with me to Hawaii. Actually, my wife, um, one of the reasons we went down there in addition to do some gigging and uh, a little bit of beach time was that my wife is having a retreat out there. She uh, is a coach, um, so she does... Uh, coaching to uh, better your better your life uh, through all life aspects. Coach, yeah, right. life, life through coach. through so many different things to help your business, to help um, nutrition and all kinds of things like that. So she holds um, workshops and retreats. So oh, she's does she actually, have a website? She does. Yeah, that should be honeygrace.com. H o n e y grace. H o n e y. Yeah, grace.com. Oh. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. There we go. Yeah. So um, she so, has a retreat coming up in Maui in May. So we went to go check out the retreat space. It's going to be a seven-day, maybe eight-day um, retreat there with all-inclusive oh, food and everything. Nice. With just going to be yoga, Holistic. meditation. Yeah, yeah, just taking care of yourself, learning how to cook uh, healthy, and just doing so many things, uh, connecting to yourself. So she's, oh, she's, so we're excited to go check out that uh, retreat space. Yeah, she knew all about the retreat space, but she wanted to show me that and talk some more details with them and check out some of the spaces. And it's just this beautiful place. It's called a Hale Akua out there up in the north side of Maui. And it's just uh, breathtaking. It overlooks uh, this huge waterfall. The, like you have a hot tub right by the waterfall, uh -huh. uh, which also overlooks the ocean. And it's just uh, oh lush and green How and beautiful. Wonderful. Oh, it's Are you it's going amazing. on the retreat? Yeah, I'm going to go um, on a retreat mainly to help her uh, cook. Because she's a chef, but she's going to be doing so many different things. So I'm going to help uh, with meals a little bit. Uh, we both did cooking school in France uh, last year, so we both do a lot of oh cooking, so I'm going to kind of help out a little bit. So. You must Fine. not have children. That's true. Yeah, no, we have puppies and uh, some kitties and stuff like that, but yeah, That's no, right. we, we run yeah. around. And but but when I hear people, oh yeah, we took a cooking class in France, and <laughs> yeah. we went to Hawaii this year and last year, I'm thinking, oh, I don't hear kids in that. In that uh... Yeah, we have a little more freedom as far as that goes, for yeah. sure, which is, yeah. which is nice. You can bring your children. I mean, your you know your dogs and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But all that, right, that can be its own its own challenges getting them in the airplane. All, all right, so stuff. tell me, uh, we're gonna wrap this up, mm -hmm. uh, Nate. So where are you playing next? Uh, well, I'm gonna be going down to LA for the Nam show and doing some performances there. Um, I do have, and then a couple other gigs here now. I've got some gigs at Hot Monk Sonoma. Okay. Uh, coming up, I think, at the end of the month and in February. Um, I'm also excited to be at the Blue Note in Napa. Oh, yeah, I like the Blue Note. Oh, we like that place. Yeah. yeah. So I'll We've be there, there February 19th. Yeah, so February 19th, I'll be doing a special solo concert, uh, two shows that night. 
uh, and be showcasing some original music, some cover tunes, and uh, I'm really looking forward to that gig. It'll be Night. fun. We're going to have to see if we can make that. Please do. Yeah. All right. I'd like to thank Nate Lopez for being our guest, and I'm Silver Shells. Cindy's back there. We want to say thank you so much for joining us, <laughs> and we will see you. Is it this Wednesday night? Who? This, us. Or we, oh, us. This Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday yes. from seven we will to see eight. This, well. Yes. This us. <laughs> it would be us. It would be us. Bye. We Bye. love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Bye. <laughs> be sure to check out Nate and his wife's website, HoneyGrace.com. His tour dates are posted on our group. Yes. We, yes. We, yeah. Thank you for that. You are welcome. You are welcome. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Cheers.